Well, I rolled out of bed this morning and checked the internet and confirmed that we do in fact live smack dab in the middle of interesting times. Over at Starbase, however, it's time for another Starbase summary. We're going to be covering November 3rd through the 5th here and kicking it off with disassembly of that massive crane over at the launch site. Of course, how do you disassemble a crane? Well, use another crane. If you're disassembling the crane, you can use a slightly smaller crane. I guess if you're assembling it, you can also use a slightly smaller crane. But you've seen the picture of like the crane picking up the crane, picking up the crane, picking up the toy crane, picking up the slightly smaller toy crane, picking up the picture of the small toy crane. Whichever way that works, uh, we have seen this crane coming apart on the daily 24-7 stream over Starbase Live. Parts of it being packaged up, disassembled, and rolled out of Starbase for its next gravity-defying adventure. This crane doesn't really defy gravity, it uses gravity. A very firm understanding of gravity and physics to convert less potential energy into more potential energy, <laughs> roughly. Whatever else is going on in the world, you can be assured that work continues on the OLM. This orbital launch pal part was actually heading over to the assembly yard, the Sanchez site, rolling into the gate there. Then we're going to take it up Highway 4 a bit and look at the road to Massey's. Here, this right turn, as soon as the label disappears, there you go. See the right turn there? That right turn leads over to Massey's. And there you can see the uh, sort of gravelly road with Massey's in the background. No inhabitants, no ship or booster inhabitants over at Massey's right now. Just a cell phone tower crane and a test cell, along with some tanks and stuff like that. There's a little bit more of a zoomed-in shot. The people working on the test stand or those? No, i got to squint down to 2010 and see if they move. I don't see them moving. Well, <laughs> either way, we'll get a little bit closer here and come right up to the uh, front entrance, right there at the moat. If you saw that Oxbow Lake in the previous video, this is the little causeway that goes across that little Oxbow Lake. You can tell we're sort of driving into Starbase here. Jack has left the Massey's area and is coming up Highway 4 to the east towards the Gulf and towards Starbase proper. You can see the production site and the launch site way in the background there. The Rocket Garden. Here, another shot. It, you can literally tell Jack was like going up the road, <laughs> like starting off at Massey's. Then we get a wide shot, then we get a closer in shot. Here, we're coming up to the Sanchez, shot, the Sanchez site. See a little bit of chopstick carriage and OLM work happening there in the background. So, <laughs> oh, what do we have here? That is some scaffolding and what might be a windbreak. I'm going to guess that that tarp is a windbreak. Usually a lot of times we'll see windbreak if there's welding or things like that happening behind it. But I'm not sure. I didn't actually see any activity there in that still photo. Through the gate here, this is a little wide shot, but you can see through the gate those low square slightly... There, they just turned darker because the cloud went over them. See them sort of flashing on and off there. Those are the parts of OLM-2, Orbital Launch Mount Boogaloo, that is being assembled over there at the assembly yard. I certainly hope they don't put this thing together and have no way to actually move it because it's too big. Nah, they have SPMTs. They'll be fine, right? Right? Pretty sure they'll be fine. We keep seeing this thing come together. Some cool 3D renders from the uh, community. If you have seen some of the folks sort of seeing how all these pieces of the puzzle fit together. Been seeing those coming across social media and stuff like that. But a lot of uh, detailed shots here. You can see where sort of hinge areas, reinforced areas in the lower left-hand corner there. Those big circles look like pins may go through them. Here's a long shot of the parking garage mural here. See some clouds going across. I don't know if they fixed the bubbles. Remember shortly after the launch, it was sort of uh, coming off a little bit. Another time-lapse shot of the launch site across the bay here. So this is going to be the production site sort of back behind you, looking across the, uh, the area. Sometimes this isn't filled with water. Usually there's a little bit of water in there, but... Uh, Flowing pretty good, right? Not flowing, it's sort of blowing pretty good right now. Motion you saw there was mostly the wind. But here we see the entrance. This is the main entrance between the two towers. I really need to brush up on my uh, <laughs> Lord of the Rings pronunciation so that I can pronounce tower names 
there's bound to be a gate into an area between two towers that we could have maybe referred to that gate as, but I don't know it offhand. Help me out down in the comments. There's the tank farm. Of course, you can only see one or two or three of the tanks there because they're all in a line horizontally, so you really just see the side of one. There's that sort of hippo that's been installed. They called it a hippo. People made fun of me. It's, this is what we call them. Jeez. But it is uh, getting installed. You can see it's got a bunch of blinds and covers on it now. Well, let's move on back up to the production site, looking in the main gate inside of Mega Bay 2 here. Some just little people running around. It's a little wider shot. Oh, work stands moved into Star Factory. Look at that. That actually... It, 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 member? Last video when I was talking about uh, scaffolding and how scaffolding might not always be the right way to do things, those looked a little bit more permanent. But here we can see some of the track sections coming off of that crane back over at the launch site again. Looks like we're going to lift up the main part of the track spreader. Somebody help me out with what the terminology there is. It's like the side suspension that the track attaches to after they've taken the track off of. It's just so cool how this whole massive crane comes apart so they can move it around. Crane, to lift heavy things, the crane itself has to be very heavy. If it's too heavy, it's too big, you can't really move it around very easily. So the engineers who designed this thing have made it so that it can come apart into modular pieces. They can be shipped on, I guess, standard roadways. It's got to leave on Highway 4. But that's how you get the big massive crane to the next place. you got to take it apart, put it back together when you get there. Looks like we've got a piece that's rolling out. The turntable. There's only one of them here. No microphones involved either. But the oversized load, the main part of the center of the crane that bears basically all the load, all the mass that that crane is moving, including the crane itself, is rolling out on that wide load truck. Destined to squash the asphalt on Highway 4 just a little bit flatter on its way out of town. So here's the Starlink building. This is over sort of on the edge of the village. And you can see that the Pez loader is not in there. I think last I saw it, that thing had rolled over to the assembly <coughs> slash disassembly slash scrapyard. And the inside of the building doesn't have a lot going on right now. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. You say payload integration, we never really got there with that specific building. There's another OLM part being lifted. This is a tough shot because you have the cars moving in front of you, right? And if you zoom in too much, you just get cars in your face every few seconds. Wide, you can't quite see as much, but back over to the Star Factory and Office Building attachment. You can start to see they're putting a bunch of those uh, attach points for the glass, the curtain wall glass. Peek inside the huge windows of the Star Factory. Seeing some nose cones here for upcoming ships. I think it's at 35 or 36 there. Of course, lacking clear labels, we can only guess and sort of count exactly how many nose cones we've seen and where they may be going. But must be nice in there to be inside the factory instead of out in the dust and wind working on nose cones like they used to. Progress is happening. Anyways, folks, that's going to be your Starbase summary. Shorter one here. Not a lot of flight-specific uh, preps going on, but we're going to see some rollouts and stuff. And at the end of the day, massive thanks. Jack was out there. The SBL Ops, of course. And my name is John. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned a little bit. And we will see you nerds later.